Since the publication of S.E. Hitton's The Outsiders in 1967, adolescent literature has never been the same. Into a world of teenagers preoccupied with making the team or getting a date for the prom, burst this hard-hitting tale of rival street gangs. S.E. Hinton's teenagers don't worry about going to the prom, they're much more concerned about just staying alive until June. Although many adults were shocked by Hinton's realistic depiction of a world of peer pressure, rigid social status, abusive parents, and gang violence, Hinton's first novel became the most emulated young adult book of all time, paving the way for the work of writers such as Paul Zindel, Robert Cormier, and Richard Peck. Indeed, critics often date the genre of contemporary adult novel from 1967 and the publication of The Outsiders. Considered by many a primitive genius who would not be able to duplicate the initial success of The Outsiders, Hinton went on to write a first popular sequel, That Was Then, This Is Now, including Rumble, Fish, and Tex. There are no, now more than 15 million books of Hinton's books in print, and all four of the first novels have been made into films. Disney's Tex starring Matt Dillon, The Outsiders and Rumblefish by Francis Ford Coppola, and the latest That Was Then, This Is Now by Emilio Estevez. If there is a formula to S.E. Hinton's books, it is only this, to tell the truth. There is also something that is quintessentially American about S.E. Hinton. Hinton's books are all set in the real American heartland, the urban frontier, and the characters are American pilgrim orphans, believers in the dream of perfection, of an American paradise on earth. Well, first of all, Essie Hinton is a woman. This is a fact that is known to most, but certainly not all of her readers, even at this late date. After the publicity of the movies, the photographs in the national magazines, and the announcement of the birth of her first child in the milestones column of time, Susan Eloise Hinton is a woman. Susan Eloise Hinton was born in Tulsa, Oklahoma on July 22, 1950. She first began writing in grade school, and she was inspired by reading especially books by Shirley Jackson. While still in her teens, Hinton became a household name by, as the author of The Outsiders, her first and most popular novel, set in 1966. The year she began writing it was 1965. The book was inspired by two rival gangs at her school, Will Rogers High School, the Greasers and the Soches, and her desire to show sympathy toward the Greasers by writing from their point of view. It was published by Viking Press in 1967 during her freshman year at the University of Tulsa, and it became the second best-selling young adult novel in publishing history, with more than 14 million copies in print, and still sells more than 500,000 copies a year. Hinton's publisher suggested that she continue to use her initials instead of her feminine given names so that the very first male book reviewers would not dismiss the novel because the author was female. After the success of The Outsiders, Hinton chose not to continue writing and publishing using her initials because she did not want to lose what she had made famous and to allow her to keep her private and public lives separate. After The Outsiders, publicity and pressure led to three years of writer's block for the young author. Hinton's boyfriend was tired of her being depressed all the time, so he made her write two pages a day. She did so and completed That Was Then, This Is Now in 1970. The situation was ripe during the mid-60s for the arrival of something like The Outsiders, although no one knew it at the time. There had been a young adult genre for many years, dominated by books like Maureen Daly's 17th Summer, which contained dreamy-eyed stories of carefree youth, where the major problem was whether so-and-so would ask the heroine to the prom in sufficient time for her to locate a prom gown. And although it's popular in middle schools today, there is a perception now that The Outsiders was published to immediate teen accolades and fanfare, but that certainly wasn't the case. In fact, because the book was so different from what the publishers considered young adult material, it was at first sent out with a general trade or adult releases, where it disappeared into the fray. It was only gradually, as the word of mouth from the field grad drifted in, that the publishers realized the book was finding word of mouth fame among the very teenagers whose lives it depicted. On its surface, at least, The Outsiders is indeed a novel about the friction between social classes, in this case between the greasers and the socias. It is also about the hunger for status, for a place in the pecking order. 
both inside and outside these groups, and it is about the violence that is so much a part that of that particular place and time of life. These concerns are not, however, what make the book come alive. The book comes alive to life through its characters and situations, their almost painful yearnings and loyalties, and their honesty. Parents and censors argued about the violence and sensationalism. The readers responded to the characters, the people, and the young reader who wrote in a letter addressed to Mr. Hinton. If you really are Pony Boy, and you have really been through these ordeals, God must really love you. The Outsiders brought Susan Hinton a taste of success, an unexpected notoriety, and a chance to travel a bit and visit places she might not otherwise have been. And it brought to her also one other thing that she hadn't counted on, writer's block. I couldn't write, she said. I taught myself to write and type in sixth grade, and I couldn't even type or use a typewriter or write a letter. Things were pretty bad because I went, also went to college and started reading good writers and I thought, oh no. I read The Outsiders again when I was 20 and I thought it was the worst piece of trash I'd ever seen. I magnified its faults. Oh no, I said, this thing has got my name on it. That was then, this is now, is, in nearly everyone's view, a much more disciplined novel than The Outsiders. From just the description of the story behind its composition, the word discipline stands out. That was then, this is now, is a story of friendship, and of time passing, and of the gradual passing of friendship as well. Things change. Here's what Essie Hinton says about the book Rumblefish. Rumblefish is the book I'm most proud of in a literary way. It was the easiest to read and it's, it's the hardest to understand, and definitely the hardest to write. According to Hinton, text is the favorite of her books. I have to become a, my narrator when I'm writing, and Tex is a fun guy to be. He's the least tough, but the strongest of my characters. The people who stay are as valuable as the people who go. Taming the Star Runner is a horse story, a love story, and a story of the different forms art can take. And some of the things that happened to Travis, who wrote his first book at 16, happened to Miss uh, Essie Hinton as well. But not all, thank God. Big David, Little David is Hinton's first picture book. When Nick learns that a kindergarten classmate and his own father not only look alike but have the same name, he wonders if they could be the same person. The Puppy Sister is also a true story. Alicia the puppy loves her new family. Mom and Dad Davidson smell friendly, and they laugh a lot. And though Nick would have preferred a sister to an unruly pup, he can usually be coaxed to play. Alicia even enjoys spending time with Miss Kitty, who's sort of stuck up but can be helpful in a pinch. Still, Alicia wants to play human games with Nick and to eat at the table with the family. Worse, she doesn't even look like her family, and Miss Kitty tells her that she'll never become a person. But Alicia won't give up without trying, and she has a most amazing plan. Hawks Harbor is Hinton's first novel for an adult audience, and Hawks Harbor is still very much an S.C. Hinton novel. It's character-driven, focusing on relationships, and it's a story of one man's journey to a different view of the world. Be careful, it's not for teens. There are sexual situations, violence, and language. In some of Tim's stories, the stories in this collection merge into a larger narrative about two cousins, Terry and Mike, whose lives and families are intertwined but whose paths lead to a very different futures, one in prison and the other enduring a guilt-ridden existence working a bar.